Hello and welcome to our channel. We are Chris and Rose, INTJ and INFJ, and we are cataloging a variety of people based on their Jungian psychological types and their MBTI four-letter abbreviations. Today we are taking a look at Chris Jericho, who we have typed as ENTP using our own intuitive process and multiple video sources. Chris, what does consensus say his type is? Please enlighten <laughs> us. Okay, well they actually say ENTP as well. Woohoo! Followed by ESTP and ESFP. Okay. So, obviously we agree. So before we get started, he's been asked, because didn't, I didn't want to start with the interviewer's face. We want to see the person that we're typing. But he was just asking him about the relationship with Vince McMahon from Chris Jericho's Days of Wrestling. Vince McMahon is like the head guy in charge. So he's asking him about that. So let's hear what the Ayatollah of Rock and Rolla has to say. Okay. But first, we've noticed that 52.2% of you people are not subscribed. <laughs> sort yourselves out. Three, two, one, go. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's funny because as as a billionaire and as a boss and like, yeah, what's Vince McMahon like? Like, what's he like? He's 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 a great guy, but he's also a boss. You know, he's, he, if you do something he doesn't like, he's going to tell you and you got to pay the price. But he also respects guys that have the same spirit that he has, which is a, re a rebel. Like, if he wasn't a rebel, there would be no WWE. Someone who's willing to take a chance. Someone who's willing to put your money where your mouth is, basically. And that's what you're saying, Bully, is, is when he's like, you went over, didn't you? Like, expecting, if I would have said, oh, I'm so sorry. Like, no, I'm not sorry. Yeah, I went over and me and John tore the damn house down for the biggest money gate in the biggest arena in the world. And if I can't, if I get in trouble for that, there's no reason for me to be here. And I'll tell anybody. I told Arn that, told everybody. And he, I think he, A, that's the way you need to feel, and B, respected it. And C, it's like, I'll, I'll give you my year's salary because if you're going to yell at me for this, then just don't even bother paying me at all. And I think he liked that attitude that I almost was like coming back at him. And anytime I came back at him for the right reasons, always respected it and that's sometimes for the wrong reasons and then there'd be an argument and then you know you'd hash it out but i can think of many times there was a time in uh in london where um dx was selling glow sticks like great uh, rave glow sticks that glow mm -hmm. in the dark and there was a big brouhaha because they did they the, the people at the o2 thought they might be used as weapons and they weren't going to let them sell them, so they finally were able to let them sell them once again main event was me and john cena come to the ring start doing mm -hmm. my promo Whatever it was, typical heel thing. People are booing, and some dude, lo and behold, hits me in the eye with a glow stick. And he hit me in the eye hard. It pissed me off. And I was like, all right, all right. You want to throw stuff at me? Go ahead. Everyone start throwing stuff at me. Come on, what do you got? What do you got? And, dude, you can go on YouTube. There is a snowstorm <laughs> of these glow sticks, and they're throwing them. Like, there must have been 100. And I remember being like a ninja, like like uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, box them out of the way. Boom, boom. So some of them hit me, but... They, they, they didn't know what they hit seen his music. He came down, whatever. After the show, Sean and Hunter, furious. Furious. Uh, uh, Why? Because uh, there was glow sticks and... Oh, they hadn't gone out yet. Uh, they had gone out. Oh, okay. Because people were throwing... Like, people bought these things for 10 pounds each and threw them away to hit me. Some kid got hit or something and they gave him a t-shirt and then Sean's like, you know, I just saved you from getting arrested. And, you know, I'm so mad because all anybody's doing is yelling at me for starting this riot. Meanwhile, you know, it's like slap shot. I got hit with a monkey wrench, you know. And uh, I was told by Johnny Ace that Stephanie wants you fined and she wants you suspended. And I'm like, well, Stephanie's not my boss. I don't give a shit what Stephanie wants. You can tell her that. And I call Vince and I cut a promo on the answering machine. If this, you know, I got heat out there and Vince McMahon, the corporate boss, might hate it, but Mr. McMahon, the heel, would love this. This is my job. This is what I'm here to do. At the end of the night, the baby face beat me. What's the problem? You're going to find me and suspend me for getting heat? I said, bring it on, mrf -er. Come on. And he just texted me back with a little smiley face and said, calm down, Junior. <laughs> and the next day right, at the garden. Okay. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, you're going to have to say stop because... When I have interesting ENTPs, I can listen to them for a long time. Yeah, I mean, right out the gate, he... Yeah. <laughs> definitely a thinker type. Definitely a thinker type and what people might call emotional, which I don't know that we talk about this a lot when we type ENTPs. 
but ENTP is having FE in that third slot, they can be very emotional creatures. Again, it has a different flavor than FI, but... It's kind of maybe like an ESFJ. They they have that boyish sort of FE quality about them in the things that they do, and they're very sort of playful, I think. I think it's more like an ESTP in this way. I think it depends for them, though, because they seem to have a bit more of like a a vulnerability um, complex <laughs> in it. You know, yeah. they, they want to be perceived as, right. a, as like the hard man more often than they are vulnerable like an ENTP does. ENTPs seem to take themselves a bit less seriously, a bit more fun in it. Yeah, exactly. Well, I think this is the NT. Well, there you go, then. Um, the ESFJ is an FE dominant. ENTP is an NE dominant. And these two functions, at the start, in their dominance, they they have a sort of openness quality that um, can be very similar. You know? Right. Someone in our comments described someone we were typing saying that they had like a like a childlike openness or something mm -hmm. and yeah he had noticed this phenomenon well i guess i'm trying to go back to the nt connection because you said it the other day um in regards to just thinkers in general you sort of have you called it a wobbly and then you get over it and move on but i think the skill of the nt in particular all four of you, you have a way of having a wobbly and almost making fun of yourselves or you don't take yourself seriously in it. I don't right. know. There's just something, whereas I think like an ESTP might. Yeah, I'm, I find myself quite hilarious. You yeah. all do. I think you all do in a way. Yeah. All the NTs do. I think for an ENTP, and especially Chris Jericho here as he's explaining it, he was righteously indignant because he knows he was the heel. And, other, and for people who don't follow wrestling, that's like the bad guy, right? They have, they have like in wrestling, they purposely turn them one side or the right. other just to make it interesting. So some wrestlers are the good ones, some are the bad ones. So he's purposely the heel, and then he's getting hated on. And then they were going to discipline him, I guess, because he was encouraging it. But he's like, this is what you hired me for, right? Yeah. There's this, And I see this with INTP as well. There is this righteous indignation in what's just and true. Yeah. And this is the truth. This is why you brought me here. Now, how dare you? But the thing is, he did his job too good. That's the problem. Exactly. Because exactly. he put so much, like, intuitive flavor into it. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. It seems to be the lot of the NT's life. Yes. Like to, uh, to you do go things too, much too well. <laughs> you do you do things too well. That's the problem. You kind of go too far. Beyond I think it's the the, the the literal interpretation too. You know, someone says, "Yeah, you're the bad guy. Go and be bad." And we're uh -huh. like, oh, "Okay." <laughs> <laughs> exactly. And then we do. <laughs> uh huh. Okay. Three, two, one, go. Went and saw him, and uh, he's like, he didn't even mention it. He's like, yeah, of course, you got heat. What's the problem? I said, that's what I mean. What's the problem? He's like, there's no problem. And I'm like, oh, okay. W would you would you say that you're the most successful rebel that ever stepped through those doors? Mm. That never was tamed. I think Sean probably was. From the, the outside. No, Sean wasn't from the outside, though. Sean took well, all these places, it, yeah. but nobody has gotten higher than you while causing so many problems. <laughs> I, but the thing is, is it? And, and you, you, you could be right about that. But I, I think it, I don't see it as causing problems. I see standing up for what I believe. Ruffling feathers. Ruffling feathers. Yes, ruffling feathers. Which I think, once again, that's a great term. Ruffling feathers. That's what Vince does. He ruffles feathers. He always says, "I don't play well with others." Well, I don't either. You know, and I don't need somebody. This is no disrespect to anybody telling me what to do when they haven't accomplished what I've done, and who tell me what to do when my idea is better and I know it. And that pisses oh. people off, but it also gets results, you know, and I think I that's one of the reasons why. When my idea is better yeah. than everyone else's. Yeah, again, this is such, has such an NTP flavor to it, right? Like, I know what I'm good at. 
I know this I know, is my... I'm intuitive, uh, and you can't yes, see it. Yes, and you can't see it. And they, well, I've heard ENTP say this to me. In fact, I had a, a high school friend, ENTP, and he said about our valedictorian, who was an ISTJ, he said, I knew in every way I was better than him. He actually listed all the reasons, and he was exactly right because he knew his intuitiveness. Mm -hmm. He knew how... He had the X factor. He, exactly. Or the N factor. Yeah, and even though, I, you know, when it came down to it, you know, this ISTJ guy graduated first in the class, the ENTP knew he had more of a complete package. He, he knew it, just like Chris Jericho was saying right here. Exactly. Thank you for sticking with us this far into the video. If you like what we're doing here, please give us a like, subscribe to our channel, and share this video as this way of supporting us helps us grow our project at no cost to you. Also, don't forget to check out our playlists where we have all our recorded videos organized by type. We have an extensive catalog, so have fun using the search bar to look for your favorite public figures. Before we get back to the video, please take a minute to leave us a comment. What do you think about this type? Does this person remind you of someone? Do you have experience with this type? Feel free to leave your type requests in the comments too. The more requests for a particular person we get, the sooner we will get to typing them. Thank you for all your support. It means so very much to us. Okay, three, two, one, go. Like you said, I've, I've done so well there is because I didn't have a problem standing up for what I knew was right. And I also know when to back off. When Vince makes up his mind, hey, Jericho versus Fandango at at, at uh, WrestleMania wasn't the biggest fan of it. Was pretty pissed off about it, to be honest with you. But you know, uh, when I realized that this is what Vince wants me to do, and there's no way out of it, now I got to make it great. If I can do that, then even though I don't feel great about it, I'll get I'll get the the respect from from the boss. How did you know that he was dead set on this, and that there was no getting around it? Um, I gave him three or four other suggestions. He said no to all of them. Uh, he was super into Fandango, and I finally just said, there's nothing I can do to change your mind, is there? And he goes, nope, and I hung up on him. And then I called Undertaker. <laughs> and I said, this, this, this is what Vince wants me to do. He wants me to work with this guy. He's not even been on TV. He hasn't even had a match. i got to work with Fandango at WrestleMania. What am I supposed to do? He goes, do it. Because what's the problem? He goes, that's who he wants you to work. Work him. Talk about Undertaker 20 and 0 uh, streak at the time. He goes, look, he goes, how many of those matches were stinkers? A lot of them were stinkers. A lot of the ones at the end were great when he was with Hunter and Sean and all those guys and Punk. But the ones at the beginning, you know, Giant Gonzalez yeah. and, you know, Jimmy, uh, Snuka. Jimmy Snook of far past his prime and, you know, uh, uh, Nathan Jones. And he goes, he goes, if you go and do your best and get this match over and get this guy over. Vince will okay, respect you more, and not, even if he doesn't, this is your job. Yeah, this guy just exudes a creative energy. Yes, he does. And perhaps this is why they got him as an ENTP. Right. It's so interesting to think of an ENTP in professional wrestling, because so much of that is ideas the creativity, you know, because they have to put so much thought into their character because really they're creating this persona. Yeah, well, it's like, it's, I guess it's like stage acting, but it's all like one thing. <laughs> yeah, and one they have take. to come up with catchphrases and everything, you know. It's a lot more than people think it is. Yeah, it's like and they so have to I, write I their character see... in real time without any right. breaks you know they're they're making a brand in some way yeah and chris jericho is like king of the catchphrase and then he's gone and made this heavy metal band called fozzy which i think has played with jack black's band tenacious d it's interesting how you know we've typed a few of these wrestlers now a lot of them are intuitive i know i think it's very appealing to NT or intuitive types probably well definitely ENTP because I think there's so much variety in it and you're never it's never a static thing so no. you could be like a good wrestler and then all of a sudden you're a bad one and then you have to come up with a whole different angle and I do think it is a very intuitive thing I do mm -hmm. it and would be if you fun think, wouldn't it 
It's more yeah. probably more of an extrovert thing, really. Um, I doubt you'd find an INTJ up there, but I do, I do see how it would be a lot of fun. Just you know, making your guy and going out, just a bit like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, yes. make it, it's like role play, you know, like yeah. make your character, um, like making a Skyrim character or whatever. And then we had just recorded an, another video talking about F.E. reacting and feeling the audience at the moment. Well, you know, he's got the N.E. and the F.E. Yeah. And so I, when he goes out there, he's feeling the audience. And if they're hating him, boy, he's going to really feed off of that and play to it, I think. Or if they're loving him, you know, yeah. same thing. I mean, he plays up with that arrogance, you know. He's like, oh, he's the yeah, he's greatest of all time thinker, or whatever. And I think he's the guy he's adept to be the bad guy really right in his thinkerism mm -hmm. um where it's like perhaps i mean i don't know but perhaps um the rock dwayne johnson would have been more of like a heroic kind of good guy i don't know why. right yeah yes yes yeah yeah chris jericho is more of a cocky good guy definitely look at me look at my ego but he's the rebellious one no, he's done both. He's been good and bad. Because oh, all, all wrestlers have to do at one, you know, they're always good, then they're not, then they're good, then they're not. That's what I think, that's what I mean. I think it's very appealing for an NE type because it's not stagnant. Okay. It's always changing. So they kind of get to reinvent themselves all the time, which is probably fun. Maybe I should have been a wrestler. <laughs> <laughs> what, would be, what would be your name? Um, the professor. The professor. <laughs> <laughs> I got yeah, on a lab you... coat. <laughs> oh, that. Hey, there you go. See, interesting. Intuition. Yes. I go out would this be like? Would this be like coat. a Clark Kent thing? Um, would you come out with the lab coat and the glasses, like a like a nerd? Yeah, yeah. I'd come out uh. with the lab coat and the like a scientist. It, yes, what? it's like intuitive speculating, isn't it? Yeah, I know. It's fun. I, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fun as we maybe type some more wrestlers. To support our project, please comment, like, and subscribe. We want to encourage a dialogue in the comments, so substantiated disagreement is welcome. Check out the playlist for this type and our recommended video below. If there's someone you want us to type, please leave a comment for us. Or you can look into our fast track system to find out how you can get your favorite people typed sooner.